All right, so night number two in the books here from Morgan Hill, California. I'm Garrett McCaffrey. This is Tiffany Elias. What's so funny, Tiffany? Oh, nothing. Just getting ready for this. Night number two in the book, and there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of highlights to get through. So let's get right to the action that happened tonight. I'm just going to kind of blast through some of the highlights. Started with the 400 IM, and both the guys and the girls in that 17, 18, 400 IM took over during the breaststroke and did not look back. It was Shannon Holton out touching Catherine Breed and it was like I said all it wasn't really out touching it was a domination during the breaststroke leg from Holton who clocked a 417 for the win same story from Joe Riggert there in the men's 400 IM for those 17 18 boys Joe Riggert going 4005 going to fast forward to the girls uh, 11 12 200 IM and it was our first look at Chloe Isleta taking a win there in a 206 28 lowering her time from this morning's swim by I think at least a second or two and I think she was about two seconds under what her time but uh, she was out in front from the get-go and she maintained it going through I believe so it was a great start it was her first of three events tonight yep. so good we'll way get to start off we'll get to those other events coming up but next up it was Benjamin Ho also pretty dominant performance in that 11 12 200 IM this time for the guys 204 08 for the 12 year old from peak Benjamin Ho, and he was not done either at that point in the night. Ariana Sagafi followed it up with a win in the 13-14 girls 200 IM, 205-68, one of those 13-year-olds who have really stepped up and taken some control at the lower part of the 13-14-year-old bracket, but uh, just one of the many 13-year-olds who had a great meet tonight. Yeah, we discussed that earlier. When you get into these age group meets, you're constantly changing age groups. So you're constantly moving up and like you said, the 13 14, the 13 year olds are definitely dominating the 13 14 age group. So it's showing that we have some strong younger kids in this age group. So they're going to be around for another solid year. Going even younger to the 10 and under girls, it was one heck of a battle between Taylor Ruck of Scottsdale and Ramey Jones of Santa Clara. It came all the way down to the touch, back and forth through the breaststroke. It was almost dead even going into the last 25 of freestyle and Taylor Ruck was able to get her hand on the wall first for Scottsdale one of many wins for the Scottsdale age groupers today you're right they were back and forth I think it was Ramey who had the lead after the breaststroke but we saw both of those girls in the two free yesterday Taylor who was the champion in the two free so we knew they were both going to have a strong finish but Taylor being that champion she was able to out touch Ramey and get that win and you're right that was just one of a few of her swims just tonight yeah and then we got another domination from a lower part of the age group in the 15 16 girls 100 freestyle it was Linnea Mack and there was never any doubt about it Linnea Mack clocking a 51 63 to take the win there in the 100 freestyle she wasn't done she also came back for one of the best races in that 100 butterfly, but we will get there. You talked to her coach a little bit about Linnea earlier today, right? I did, and I spoke to him, and he said, watch out for Linnea because she's going to be your top seed going into the 100 freestyle and a top seed. I think she was second going into the 100 fly and came out with that victory. Said she had a good chance of taking both of those, which she did. One of them, the 100 freestyle, might have been in a record time. I'm, I can't remember, but either way, great swim for Linnea on both of those. Yeah, she's a long, young 15-year-old, and she takes advantage of those long ac axis strokes like the freestyle, but also pretty good at the short axis, which we'll get to in that 100 butterfly. But first, let's talk about our first look at Maxime Rooney tonight in the 100 freestyle. 49.35, not too shabby for a 12-year-old to get under that 50-second no. mark. Not, not at all. We've seen multiple barriers get broken. And here for Maxime, 49, that's a great way to start off his night. Like you said, the one look at the many we're going to see from him. Another great race took place in the girls' 13-1400 freestyle. Iris Brand of Pleasanton able to out-touch Victoria Torres of Scottsdale. 51-7-0 for Brand, 51-89, so less than two-tenths of a second in that race. That was almost an upset for me. I thought Victoria Torres had that halfway through the 100 freestyle, but you're right. I, I can't remember what that name was, but she definitely came in there for the win, and so almost maybe one of our upsets of the night. Yeah, Iris Brand with a very good yes. final 25 to take that win there, and then arguably the performance of the night, Justin Lynch for the second night in a row, clocking one of the most unbelievable times I've ever seen from a 14-year-old, 46-91 in the 100 freestyle from Justin Lynch. Well, and we saw him 49-8 in the 100 fly, so you would hope that his freestyle would be a little quicker, and as it was, he was a 46. I'm not quite sure if I'd say I definitely won of the top races of the night, but I'm going to hold out for that relay as for what my top race of the night is yep. to round we, out this day night. This we will day get two. there to that 11-12-400 free relay, but another great battle in the 10 and under, under 100 freestyle between Taylor Ruck of Scottsdale and Ramey Jones of Santa Clara. Taylor Ruck again getting the win in a 57-96 just in front of Ramey Jones who touched in 59. 
59-23. Moving on to the 15-16-100 fly, and it was another look at Linnea Mack touching in 55-7-3. Were you at all surprised that she can do a little bit of that butterfly as well as the freestyle? No, I think I said throughout the broadcast, at least personally speaking, is that I think butterfly and freestyle definitely come to not necessarily package together, but I used to have a coach say that training butterfly is going to help your freestyle. So I don't think it uh, at all surprised me that she was one of our top in that stroke. I think we see a lot of, you know, transition go between those two strokes. Yeah, and then getting back to the long axis strokes and the 200 backstroke, it was another chance for Chloe Isleta to get her name on the top of the of the record board and also on top of the scoreboard here. 203-60 and the 200 back for Chloe Isleta. She really did it on the front half, got out there with a big-time lead and was able to hold on to hold off the rest of the field. Though. And also note that that was Chloe's third event of the night. She had the 100 freestyle in between there. So she was your champion in the 2IM to start. She had the 100 free, and then she came back to win another event. So three events for She's only one of the many swimmers that had three events tonight. Another so one I think was Benjamin Ho. I don't know if he had three, but he definitely had two. And this is yeah. his second win, getting a 158-3 in that 200 backstroke. The 12-year-old from peak, pretty impressive. I mean, there was never a doubt from it right from the start. No. Victoria Torres getting in there for another top finish for Scottsdale. 2032 in that 200 backstroke for the 13 14 girls. And then Justin Lynch coming back and finishing things off right with a new Far Western record in the 200 backstroke for the 13 14 boys. 152 85 for Justin Lynch. We rounded it out in the 50 fly with. What I thought was the fastest of the 50 flies or the most impressive in my book, Maxime Rooney getting under that 25-second mark with a 24-8-0. Tiffany, tell us about that national age group setting relay. All right. Well, what a great way to end out night number two with the 11 and 12 foreigner freestyle relay. That was the Irvine Nova squad who we've seen at countless Far Western records go down so far. But this was if it holds a national record there for the 11 and 12-year-olds. So what a great way to round out night number two. We've yeah. seen records go down right and left, but this is our first national record of the night. So once again, that goes to show how fast this Far Western's meet really is. Oh, definitely one of the fastest age group meets in the country. That's why teams come from all across the United States and even up in Canada. We've got a team from Edmonton making the trip down. That's going to do it for night number two. If you missed any of this live action, we want to, we want to apologize again for the technical difficulties here. We've got it all figured out. We've got it all ironed out, and it should be good, smooth sailing, knock on wood, going forward for the next two nights for that live feed. But all that action will be on demand tomorrow morning um, as we start to upload it throughout the morning tomorrow. So be looking for those races plus the interviews. All these recaps, we've got results there. So everything you need to know right there on the swimmingworld.tv coverage page for the Far Check Western Championships. We're going to be right back here tomorrow night for the live feed starting at 5 p.m. Pacific. We're going to go live about 10 till 5 to give you a preview, maybe go over some of the uh, interviews that we did leading into uh, the finals for night number three. That's what's going on tomorrow. But as for night number two, I'm Garrett McCaffrey. Tiffany Elias. We'll see you guys tomorrow.